Hey y'all, uh, welcome back to another episode of Dot's View Podcast. Um, I'm doing an audio podcast today with the wife. Um, my interracial relationships. Um, for all the viewers that's not tuned in, y'all go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, hit like, uh, leave a comment, you know, the usual, um, and all that good stuff. Well, today, y'all, I'm, I'm a little, it's a little different from the usual podcast I'll be having with the guys. I got it with the wifey, so we're going to talk about the pros and cons, basically, or the cause and effects of interracial relationships and all that good stuff. So I'm going to let her introduce herself, and then I'm going to go ahead and take it from there. Hello, everyone. This is Juju Beads. I'm the wifey, and he is so kindly allowing this to be audio since I am afraid of being on the camera, but you may see my face in the future, depending on how this goes. So let's do it. All right, y'all. So today, or tonight, the evening, whatever it may be, uh, I'm talking about the interracial relationships and what's going on and what's good with it and uh, the pros and cons. I had a, I written down some, but I decided not to call it pros and cons because we ain't going to put it as a good and bad thing. We're just going to give you our points and opinions on basically how we feel and how we look and view how other people feel about it. Uh, me, y'all see me enough, so I'm gonna let her go ahead and give y'all her little insight at the beginning. Then I'll chime in and then I'll give y'all mine. Um, but, but, uh, okay. So she, she was giving me the signal not to go. But yeah, so I'm gonna let her explain to you how she feels about being in a relationship with a black man and then vice versa. But white woman in, in my case. But yeah, go ahead, Donna. Well, first of all, not white woman, but white woman by visualization for other people. Uh, but for me personally, I don't see the issue. I don't see how it's any different than if it was a black man, black woman, white man, white woman, Latino. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense to me why it's an issue. Um, I love this man that I'm sitting next to. I don't love him because he's a black man. I do love that he is a black man, if that makes any sense. Um, I guess I've just, I've always been taught my entire life, you just, you love who you love and you're with who you're with because of who they are and not what they're defined by. So I don't understand all the uproar. I don't understand why people can't accept it. It doesn't affect you. If you see me out in public with Dion, It doesn't affect you. It has nothing to do with your life. So why are you so bothered by it? I guess that's what upsets me so much. I'm just very open, very liberal. I don't care who you love. As long as they make you happy and they're good to you, that's all that should matter. Well, and um, my little, uh, my side of it is not only have we, um, I didn't just meet. Uh, I didn't just meet her like yesterday or a couple years ago. We known each other since high school, so with me, everybody knows familiarity. Um, two, it's not about color any uh, with me either. I got over that a long time ago uh, when I was younger because my mom taught me. You know, not everybody is the same way, and you can't uh, you can't put your eggs in one basket and then when that basket is gone, you're looking elsewhere and you can't find no other eggs. So. Um, we was taught to just go ahead and, and give everybody a chance depending on how they treat you and how they act themselves. So me and her dating um, back since high school. She was the first girl I, I went with in high school. Um, so it was familiarity. She moved away. It was a long length of time had passed. You know, everybody went through their own life, did their own thing. I had a, a child and all of that out the mix and we met up years later and then it sparked again so there you have it uh it wasn't one of those one things like i was back home and i wasn't doing nothing with myself so i just decided to hop up and um go hunt for somebody to leech off of no i was more like um i was doing okay back home you know what i'm saying didn't kalamazoo shout out um really didn't want to settle there because i hadn't been there in in years prior because Moved to Atlanta, um, moved back. You were looking for an upgrade. 
Yeah, it's it, a life upgrade. It, it was. I was looking for something to um, better myself. So I just decided, you know, we talked, um, worked our little whatever out, and six years, um, six years later, we sit here. So with me, it's all. It's not all about skin. It's not all about um, how a person looks. It's not all about how. I mean, not not looks. Uh, that has nothing to do with the color basis, but age really don't have nothing to do with color um and it got nothing to do with uh race either to me you know what i'm saying because race and color you two different things you could be mixed so you can look one color but be like five races so um it's not about that to me it's just about familiarity being comfortable and um not getting played so uh, it was definitely a comfort thing because us both coming from kalamazoo it's like we understood each other so when you said something, it wasn't like, what are you talking about? I knew exactly what you were speaking on. So that definitely helped with the connection between us. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we just, we clicked because we clicked back in the day. You know, we listened to the same kind of music. We would watch the same things on TV. We'd pick the same movies to go see. So, you know, it had a lot to do with that. And that's another thing, like I've had people ask me, well, why don't you date white boys? Well, because I don't relate to them. Now, I have dated Puerto Rican men, which I learned my lesson with that. No offense if you're Puerto Rican. So is my daddy. So, you know, I, I've got respect for you, but it's just not my thing. We don't click. I wasn't raised, um, I guess, with that culture because he wasn't around. So, and as far as dating the white boys, white men, I really, I don't relate. I don't listen to the same kind of music. I don't like the same kinds of activities. They just, they don't understand me. Like, perfect example, I dated a white boy, uh, freshman year of college, went out on two dates. I picked him up one time. I was listening to Tupac when he got in the car and he asked me why I was listening to the ghetto garbage. That's the last time I spoke to him. So, you know, and it also familiarity. We talked about that just a few minutes ago. Like, I grew up with a black stepdad. I was raised in a black family, in the black church. That's just the culture and the community that I relate to, that I understand, that I respect, you know, that I just, I find myself a part of that. Whereas I look to the white community and I don't really fit. They look at me like I'm just the outcast. So, I mean, that may have a lot to do with why I'm actually drawn to you know, and it's, it's not necessarily all black men because I've met some that there's just yeah, no man. attraction. We don't click. Yeah, I met some, some white girls I didn't get along with. It may have been somewhat cool, but it was it wasn't all that uh it wasn't all that in the end. Me and uh, me as far as with black women, uh, I have no problem with sisters. I don't know. I the the black men that say they don't date black women because this, that, and the third. Nah, my the reason. I love black women is because my mom is a black woman, my auntie, rest her soul, and aunties, and you know, daughter, all of them are black sisters. women. Sisters. Yeah, sisters, daughters, aunties, all of them are black women, and they all exhibit the, the good side of black women, not the, the ghetto side, the nail popping and the fingers. No, most, most of my people, I can't speak for everybody else's, but most of my sisters and cousins and all that good stuff was raised with a certain amount of intelligence and um, prestige about themselves. So uh, my mama wasn't wild like that. So my my uh, sisters ain't wild like that. And hopefully, uh, I in my genes is calm enough so my daughter don't act crazy like that. Which I don't think so. She's not up and all wild like that. So um, I guess I got lucky. But me, um, as far as when you go to black women, I just ain't. Had <laughs> too like I ain't had too good of a track record because my personal decisions I probably could have made a lot of those uh, situations better but uh, I was young dumb and on the move so I guess I had to learn from that so uh, I have no problem with the sisters themselves I just didn't I ain't had too much luck but that don't mean um, I to speak for her too that don't mean like we don't we don't care about those people you know what i'm saying like i don't care about sisters she don't care about white boys no it's not like that it's just basically situations we was in 
didn't call for for them at that time. So, well, see, and I'm going to speak up for the the black female community and say that I personally, as a woman looking in from the outside, see a lot of men who don't have enough confidence or self-value or strength to date a strong black woman. I feel like they're just intimidated and they're afraid and they don't like to have their masculinity challenged at all. And I know there's a lot of strong black women out there that are single because those males can't handle it. And that's just sad. And then they try to flip it and say, oh, well, she's this, she's that. No, she is strong, she is independent, she is smart. And, you know, it just, I think it scares some men and they try to make excuses for it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the things too. Like, um, one of the, the, the kinds of uh, interracial dating is a lot of people outside your race, um, like if you have hateful, black, white, whatever you may be, uh, whatever your nationality is, you may have a female version or a male version in that same nationality don't like you because you're dating outside of your race. Um, it, it all, it's pros and cons. That's one of the cons, but one of the pros is just diversity and other people that are open-minded look at you with a more diverse eye than basically thinking that you're some black dude that's, uh, cause you already know the, the, um, the stigma of broke, being a broke black dude. They see a um, well-off plump white girl or a fat white girl, how they put them. Um, and you will see that relationship happening. And that was, that was kind of a thing for a minute, but that actually faded away probably about four, about four years, four or five years ago that that kind of faded away because it's not just big white women going with small black men, it's vice versa now. And it's all kind of women going with all kind of men now. So, but it's still a big stigma with the black and white because that's the major basically that the more the two worn races right now is black and white people so when you see black man white man uh, black woman white woman together that's why you see a lot of people have problems because it still stem from back in the day you know systematic racism um well before you even get that. on before you even get on all that um we can squash that that stigma or that um that whole idea that there's that white woman that is going to take care of that black man. Because I will tell y'all out there, Dion pays his portion of all the bills. He holds up his end of the bargain. And I don't just, oh, let me buy you this. Let me buy you that. You do what you want. I don't do that. And I don't play that. I'm sorry. No, he'll tell you. I don't just sit down and take it. No. Like, I will give him shit. I will give it back to him. And, you know, we, we come equal in this relationship. If I thought for one minute that he was trying to, you know, leech off of me, take advantage of me, he would have been gone six years ago. We wouldn't be sitting here talking about, you know, being married and, and spending the rest of our lives together. So you can just, that whole thing right there, you know, the, the, the black man is not supporting himself and not taking care of his responsibilities. That's, that can go. You know, that's, um, uh, I was raised by all women anyway, and a good, good father. But I was raised by mostly women, auntie, grandma, mom. So I had three times the, the female influence in, in my life. <clears throat> and they all was black. So <clears throat> of course, I'm gonna have a better outlook uh, than most would have. Now, if you cross one of them cats that say they don't, they don't like dating their own race because of, let's say, the, if it's anything outside of them having a bad experience, such as somebody uh, molesting them, um, the R word, which we can't say on YouTube, but that happening, um, or anything else besides them physically or mentally um, by badgering them, because we can't say the other A word on YouTube either. But um, if, if those two things happen, besides those two things, I don't think you should just basically relegate your your own race um to the dark side you should everybody deserves a chance you might meet that one person out of the race that just might be that person for you even though you like dating outside or you can get somebody that's mixed with the race that you like and your race because this this all kind of flavors out here please believe me and i will tell you don't let the person that you believe 
is your person. Don't let their family and their family's beliefs stop you from going after, you know, what you think is right for you. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of haters in every family. I mean, I have a very liberal family, very loving, open, but there are a few that have something to say. And you know what? Let them talk. Just let them talk. Let them run their mouth because they're the ones with the problems. You know, don't don't allow, you know, if you have one of those people in your family, don't allow their views to cloud you. You know, it, it even, not even just race, but now we're talking about, you know, you have the homosexuality. You know, yeah. my nephew's gay. I couldn't be more proud of him and his boyfriend. You know, they, they go out there and they're happy and they're good to each other. And no matter what their families are saying, they don't care. Because in the end, they got each other. And that's what's important. That's what you need. Uh, plus, um, yeah, shout out to Malik. Um, Love you, boo. Plus, most people, most people don't, like um, my, my family, we don't, we don't really care about that. We didn't been through. We've been through enough um, in our lifetime that little stuff like that. That nothing that can hurt us. If words don't hurt my people at all, you can talk about us each and every day, all day, every day. As long as you don't come put your hands on us, then you're gonna actually see why we so quiet and we don't care about our words. But well, how I was raised is some of my family back in the day. Believe me, coming from Chicago not seeing that many white people and very, very little Mexican people. I, we basically was relegated to just the hood. None but, none but Negroes. That was none but us. But we was taught by the people in our neighborhoods, the older cats, and we was also taught by our people, seeing that we have actual white people that's blood in our family. Um, we was actually taught that you, if you, the more open-minded you are, the easier it'd be for us being black to move out here in the world. Um, we don't we don't need to associate ourselves with everything from the ghetto. We also don't need to leave everything in the ghetto and try to switch to the suburbs is what we was taught. You balance it out. So we was taught that dating outside your race is nothing but helping you balance something. Whatever it may be. I don't know what your your vice may be, but if you got a vice and it has something to deal with color, then maybe you can work it out by trying to, you know, dating a, a, a white girl or a black man or vice versa or Latino, Asian, however it may be. Um, to me, if you if you close yourself off to just one thing, you ain't never going to enjoy life. Definitely. I just, like, you know, I hear a lot of people that say, there's the two sides. You have the people that are so against it and they're still living in their 1950s, I hate you because of the color of your skin, whole attitude. And then you have the people, they, they say the thing that drives me insane is that I don't see color. Now it drives me nuts because there's no way that you don't see the color of someone's skin. You know, it's, it's like, I see, but I see your skin, mm -hmm. but I don't see you for your skin. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, I love that you are proud of who you are and that you are a black man. I love that you're proud of that, but that's not why I love you. But you have to, I know it's kind of going off out there, but you have to remember that people are proud of who they are and you have to acknowledge that, you know? And we're not talking about those people that are out there like, you know, the white power, white pride, I'm so happy I'm white. That's that's ridiculous because those are the kind of people that are saying, I'm proud that I'm white and you're not white, so you're not important. We're not talking about those people. We're talking about the people that are like, listen, look, I'm proud, I'm, I'm Asian, I'm Hispanic, I'm, you know, I'm black, I'm proud of who I am, so please acknowledge it. And I think that's something that, that's really important in the interracial relationship too, because like, I'm not trying to make you Puerto Rican. I'm not trying to make you white. You're not trying to make me black. We just respect one another for our culture and try to understand it and try to integrate into it. Yeah, it's funny when people think that. I don't know why people think you can change your DNA if you date somebody outside the race. That's so annoying. 
you know, I've met guys like that. Actually, like, you know, I've, I've met a few. Girls like that. <laughs> a few guys, they... In, something else that bothers me about that, though, you have certain people, you know, that, that act either, we'll say, hood, or, I guess, super intelligent, like Mr. Bill Gates type stuff, right? Yeah. And your own community is mad at you for that. Why are you trying to act black? Why are you trying to act white? They don't understand that either. I think yeah, it's um that acting thing that that's finally got um I'm glad that's that's dying out too, but yeah, it's just the acting thing. Basically it's, it's what things are equivalent to. Like a lot of people used to equivalent high intelligence to Asian and white people. They used to equivalent violence and craziness to black people. But a lot of people are opening their eyes and a lot of veils are coming off of a lot of things to prove what's been going on. Like, uh, I think it was 1960, if I'm not mistaken, um, I'll put the graphic up there, but it was the first interracial relationship they got. They had to go to court in order for it to even happen. And it was a white dude and it was a mixed a mixed black lady. Um, forgot their names. Um, I seen the article, but they had to go to court in order to even be together. And I was thinking that's what even spawned this whole idea for this this episode right here because about 30 to 40 years ago, me and Juju Dayton would have probably got me killed. Um, literally. That's just crazy. It literally probably got me killed or it got me exiled to where I couldn't be comfortable wherever I was at because I would have to worry about somebody who wasn't black or somebody who was black or both coming after me just because I was dating somebody outside my race. And to me, that, that basically made me realize how some, not not all, but some of the prejudices of the world, not racism, the prejudices, because that's one of the prejudices of the world, you know, not being able to, to date somebody outside your race. But I was, those prejudices have uh, died down just enough for black men and black women and white men and white women not to get ridiculed or or hell killed you know just for dating each other or liking each other and I thought that was interesting see that makes me think of like it's like the secret treasure the hidden treasure you know it's something that they are so afraid of because they know it's a powerful thing Mm -hmm. you know they see two different cultures coming together two different races coming together and forming this strong bond and creating a future, bringing children, you know, of mixed races and cultures into the world. And I think it has a lot to do with, you know, the, the dying out of the Aryan nation. There are no pure-blooded white folks walking this earth anymore. It, it doesn't exist. And I think that terrifies those people. And that's why they're so against it. Make them uncomfortable. Hey, I say keep pushing it. Hey, I mean, it's... <clears throat> You want to change, you got to make somebody uncomfortable enough to change. So, I think we didn't, they, interracial dating kind of made the world just uncomfortable enough to say, okay, we accept it. If nothing we can do about it, we're not finna. If said person wants to go with said person and they have different colors, it's nothing that we can do about it. Um, it's not illegal. It should never have been illegal. Um, it should have never have been uh, a big thing. But, we went back there in history, so big ups to everybody that did overcome and conquer all of that BS so we can sit up here and give y'all this podcast today. Um, oh, yeah, go ahead, Donna. It's just crazy, though, because it hasn't, I mean, it's changed, but it hasn't changed. You know, just the other I day, haven't. my mom was telling me a story about uh, back in 1984, so I was about three years old. And she was dating this guy, and they were out at a bar in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And um, just the people staring. And somebody actually yelled out to her, how do you kiss that thing? And it just, it blew my mind that people actually, like, said stuff like that. You know, they looked at this man, and all they saw was black man, white woman. They didn't see two consenting adults that cared for each other. You know, they didn't see two people that have feelings. And, you know... They seen white woman and black animal. 
That's why I said thing. But it's still the same today. Like when we go out, some people stare at us. I just stare right back at them. You know, know. like you got to never notice that though. And see, I do. And that's the funny thing. Like you said, you aren't really offended by it or you doesn't really bother you that much. I get more offended than he does. Like if someone was to say something about it, I'd be the one getting bailed out of jail, not him. Because I just, I get so upset. I think it's ridiculous. It's like, shut your mouth. If you've got a problem, keep it to yourself. Because once you speak on it, then it becomes my problem. You've involved me. And now I'm about to let you know how I really feel about you. And it just... You know, I don't understand the hate. Like I said in the beginning of this, my mama raised me that everybody bleeds red. Everybody's heart beats the same. Everybody has feelings. Everybody was created by the same God. And we're all exactly the same with the same needs, you know, for survival in this world. And that everybody deserves to be treated as a human being with respect and dignity. And apparently some people miss that when they were growing up. And I can fix that for you. If, if you'd like me to. Yeah, no, I've, we was taught, um, the reason I, I think I, why, well, it's two reasons why I ignore it. One, I don't want to go to jail because go. I'm violent. And two, uh, I calm down and I've, I haven't been with that many, uh, I haven't dated that many white, white girls in my life. I think about three. You're the, you're the third one probably. But I already knew from back in the day, my auntie being, uh, as strong as black woman as she was, she let me know, like, listen, you, got, you go out here, you date a white woman, you're going to have some people that say, hey, cool, but you're going to have a nice little handful of people that's going to be like, nah, bro, we're not down with that. You shouldn't be here. She shouldn't be here. Y'all should separate. Let us take her. You go back to where you're from. Stuff like that. But once again, the Bible says everybody was created equally. All men are men. All women are women. So if you feel like you have a connection with someone that isn't your color, but you still got a connection with them, you should go with that connection instead of the basis of what everybody else is talking about because once again, like like my girl was saying, you ain't got you don't have to hate your race to be proud of dating somebody else or to love somebody else. You don't have to hate your race to love somebody else. You can be proud of who you are a hundred percent but you just got a connection with somebody different. So you just basically take that connection and roll with it. But a lot of people nowadays will get butt hurt and come across the airwaves or Facebook, Twitter, and all of that with the, hey, you're a monkey, you this, and N-word this, and white this, and cracker this, and you got to take it the way you take it. Me, to me, I let it roll off my back because if, if I reacted to every situation like that, I wouldn't be able to do no YouTube videos ever because all my money would be spent on getting out of jail or, yeah, getting out of jail, basically. That's basically what it'd be. So, I just kind of ignore it. I just don't feed into the trolls. I call them the keyboard warriors. You got balls of steel when you're typing on that keyboard, but wouldn't say half of that stuff to my face. It's just, it's disgusting the people that are out there, you know, and the fact that we have such xenophobia in Washington that it allows people to feel secure and, and right in these hateful things that they're spewing. And you know, just basically all I can say is being in a interracial relationship, it's not easy. You know, you deal with a lot of shit from a lot of people, but if it's that right person for you, it's worth it. You have to fight for it. You know, nothing worth having in this world is easy. It's not gonna come easy if it's valuable. So, you know, I, I got a lot of stuff from certain people in my family for pretty much all my relationships. I couldn't bring my boyfriend, my fiance, my husband around to certain people in my family because that's just the way they are. And I mean, that doesn't make me that way. Obviously, I'm completely different from those people. And it's just amazing. You know, it's there were three children growing up in my grandparents home and all three of them ended up very different they were all brought up exactly the same but they all have very different views and the grandchildren for the most part have different views as well because they were brought up by their parents and raised in different environments and I was just one of the very blessed ones that my mom 
raised me in a very diverse community from the very beginning. You know, I had no fear of someone simply because they didn't look like me or because they sounded different than me or they went to a different church than me or they lived in a different neighborhood or their food was different. I mean, I was taught that, I mean, it was cool. You know, I got to share all kinds of different experiences growing up and that definitely helped me. Unfortunately, a lot of people are denied those experiences and they end up, those people hiding behind the screen telling you that you're an end lover or that you're gonna go to hell because you mixed races. And it's, it's just, it is, it's stupid. And I'm just glad they're behind a keyboard because I can't go to jail for that, you know? I can't get to them. So, but I mean, I think it's a beautiful thing what we have, what we've grown. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but- yeah, Nothing is perfect. But it's worth it's fighting for. Yeah, as long as it's our, as long as it's good. As long as we ain't physically putting our hands on each other and all that stuff. Yeah. That's all good. So, yes, yes, you guys, um, that's about the, the gist of most of it. I mean, we could elaborate a long, long time about this, but it'd be better to interact with, with, with folks. So the next time we probably do this, we'll probably try to go live um, with it and bring people actual live, you know, comments and questions and all that good stuff. Maybe that this will be the appetizer and maybe y'all want some more. So, but if y'all do, you go ahead, leave us a comment. Then you, if you're not subscribed, then subscribe, hit the bell, get your notifications. But I'm going to let my daughter exit and then we're going to exit. So you have anything to say before we close, my love? Just thank you for listening. And just remember if you see somebody out in a couple or, you know, even by themselves and it makes you a little uncomfortable, Try to open up to it. Stop closing yourself off and, you know, just try to think of all the positives that are associated with that person or their relationship. Yeah, and just realize that everybody lives, everybody goes through things, and everybody got a different uh, walk of life. And if you know their path, walk it with them. If you don't, then ask them um, some tips or something on how to move to yours better. If they doing theirs good, if they not, then don't. But also, love who you love, uh, connect with who you want to connect with, and be happy regardless of the stigmas out here because everybody ain't going to be happy for you. So, that being said, y'all already know it. Y'all already know, nerdies. This has been another one, and we are gone.